Um, it's different every time we go out and actually look for snakes. Different areas, different. We see different snakes wherever we go. Like mm -hmm. even when we went out for turtles, we saw a northern water snake. And when we're down here in this other site, we've also we've seen milk snakes, garter snakes, the queen snake, of course. I just like to see the different types of snakes since there are so many uh, different kinds in one area. So it's just interesting to see the differences between all of them. And it's just exciting to find them. measure the snakes. That way we can get some information on uh, her size for, for our records and each time we catch her afterwards hopefully uh, we can monitor growth and, and uh, changes in weight. Especially once she's given birth to the young, obviously she'll go down in weight quite a bit. So we want to get as much information as possible. Sure. Uh, and because she's a pregnant female we're going to be very careful during processing and, uh, and, and go from there. Absolutely. Go. you and your team have been able to deal with some of these threats uh, to the, uh, the queen snake? Well, it's a multi-tiered approach. Uh, I'm chair of the queen snake recovery team in Canada. Uh, there's a, a number of members that participate in that team to look at ways to uh, best protect habitat, best protect the species. Uh, on the ground, uh, my team and I, we've been doing uh, detailed research to get to know as much as we can about the species, to understand them. Uh, if you don't understand the species, you can't uh, have effective change for ensuring habitat protection. So uh, we are doing that through our research. We're also uh, creating new habitat sites. We're removing invasive vegetation. We're also educating the public. We go to schools, to uh, various community groups, uh, and to landowners to educate them on uh, species in our own backyards, including the queen snake, and how they can better protect those areas.